Why is the Phillips curve in Europe broken when it's not broken elsewhere? You've just mentioned yourself that we have a very strong uh, employment recovery in Europe and the economy is getting better. But you've also said you do not see um, wage uh, increases picking up so much so that we should have lift off on rates. What's wrong with the European economy that we haven't got the natural relationship between greater employment and greater wages? Well, the, the, the Phillips curve relationship is a macro relation. There's a lot going on uh, at the micro level uh, in, in, the, uh, in the European uh, labor market. And there's uh, still a, a lot of room uh, for adjustment uh, in our labor markets. That's why uh, I think we don't see uh, that, uh, that macro relation uh, at, at work. For example, in terms of mobility, uh, we still have a lot uh, to, to, to gain. From, from mobility uh, in Europe, uh, which is still uh, very much at uh, below pre-COVID uh, pre uh, times. Uh, we, we also uh, have um, a lot uh, to, to, to be reflected uh, in the labor market uh, from, from this pressure. And, and I really hope uh, we are able to, to, to cope with it in terms of wage negotiations, because contrary, for example, to the US, uh, in Europe, we preserved labor relationships. We did destroy uh, labor relationships during the crisis and then uh, uh, went on to, to increase uh, employment again. Our adjustment was pretty much done uh, around hours of work and not, and not uh, uh, bodies and not employment. So these are differences in the adjustment process uh, in, in, in Europe that um, have, uh, as a result, uh, this apparently uh, uh, broken relationship uh, according to the, to the Phillips curve. So uh, I am hopeful that uh, Europe can tackle that, this challenge again, as, as it did in 2020, uh, and, and that our labor market is able to uh, adjust uh, without reflecting too much pressure on wages uh, in, the coming, in the coming quarters. Mario, it's Karen jumping in. I want to ask you about the Fed. It is Fed Day today, and I wonder if there's a real risk here and how you perceive it about the Fed doing much more than expected, which could effectively broaden out the gap between the Fed and the ECB, dragging you along the curve. We've seen this play out before with other central banks. Are you concerned about that, and how are you viewing what the Fed does this year? Well, you know... Uh... Our markets are uh, interlinked and, and we must be, uh, of course, uh, uh, attentive to uh, other uh, central bank decisions, of course, including the Fed. But the European economy uh, has uh, its own uh, characteristics and nature. Uh, and uh, at this stage, uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, a minute ago, we don't, we don't see um, this uh, pressure coming from, from the labor market into into the European uh, economy, particularly in terms of inflation. Of course, uh, we we must uh, uh, coordinate uh, our policy decisions with um, with what is going on uh, around us. But uh, again, I want to stress is very clear: we will always be uh, data dependent uh, and uh, we will take uh, the decisions in a very open uh, mind setting <laughs> in terms of uh, what is uh, the best uh, to, uh, to fulfill our mandate that in Europe we all know is uh, primarily uh, price stability. Uh, but uh, in the revision of our monetary policy uh, framework, we uh, add a, a very uh, strong uh, role also to financial stability. So uh, uh, fragmentation, uh, financial stability uh, are concerns for us, and, and we will uh, tackle those uh, very uh, with a very steady hand, I will say.